Why carry a handbag like everyone else's when you can be the designer? With a little sewing and embroidery know-how, you can stitch, shape, and embroider upscale handbags. My guest is embroidery expert and handbag expert specializing in trendy embroidery techniques. Please welcome back Eileen Roche, who is the editor of Designs and Machine Embroidery magazine. Thanks for being with us again. It's great to be here, Nancy. You know, the best thing about handbags when you create your own is no two look alike. During our first episode, we gave designer details at the corner and strap area bags. Now we're turning our focus to putting the bag together and creating the tab options. Designer handbags, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. During our first program of designer handbags, Eileen and I detailed working with the bag, working with the fabric, the stabilizers inside, adding an embroidery. And this is one of our designs where the embroidery has been added to the corners and it's stitched in the shape and the decorative effect all in one. We ha have lots of stabilizers in this bag and we also will show you during this program how to do some shaping adding some snaps in very unique positions to change it from a rectangular bag to an angled bag. And Eileen, the tab is going to be our feature because the tab can be attached easily, sewn in an embroidery machine, and then we have exact placement for the snaps. That's right, and that tab, of course, is a digital file, so it's going to be perfectly symmetrical and fit perfectly on the bag exactly where it needs to land. This is what we finished with mm -hmm. last show. We had already added our corner accents and our strap is connected to the bag with a strap connector. Now these look like appliques and they are. They're total appliques but they were done with a computerized embroidery machine. And they were shaped exactly like this so you would have accuracy. No matter what kind of bag you're making, whether you're doing embroidery as we are doing today or you're just doing straight stitching, it's important to have stabilizer, the proper stabilizer. You want the bag to stand up uh -huh. and really have some body and this extra firm craft stabilizer does that. Or interfacing, I guess we could call it. Right, and, it's, and another option is a foam type of stabilizer or interfacing, it's used, sold in the upholstery department for relining mm -hmm. cars, the headliner area of the car. It's kind of odd, but it works great in bags. It does. So use one of these two options. Now you're going to create two of these. You need two, one for the front, one mm -hmm. for the back, and then it's time to sew it together. The best part about it is all that's left is three seams and to finish the top of the bag. So here we have two completed front, a free, completed front, completed back, and we've done some stitching. Now when you sew the bottom seam together, you want to match the appliques, uh, you know, pin there mm -hmm. first or use binder, binder clips so that it, they're perfectly matched. And then you sew it with a quarter inch seam mm -hmm. allowance. I used a template which called for a fourth of an inch seam allowance and mm -hmm. because of that crisp stabilizer, it's tricky to press it. It is. And you have a great tip for that, Nancy. You like to use a wooden dowel mm -hmm. that you just slide underneath of that seam and then take your iron and press it open. And by doing this, you're not going to leave any marks mm -hmm. on the outside of the bag from the seam allowance. Right. And that hard surface will flatten it out. And then right. for the bottom seam only, we do one extra step. I'm just going to set aside my dowel. And that's a multiple step zigzag to secure down the stitch. I think you can see that better as we go to the right side of this. You can see that multiple step zigzag. There we go, maybe right in here. Yeah, and you've selected a thread that just blends <laughs> with the fabric. That's perfect. So it's nice and flat. Mm -hmm. But yet a, a bag, no matter what style of bag you're making, just basic, no embroidery, you need some additional stabilizer down here. You want to define the bottom and really give mm -hmm. it a rectangular base. 
And you use a plastic, it's a sewable plastic, which yes. is quite cool. Right, it's stitchable plastic, so you can find this, you know, somewhere in your, in your sewing room or your favorite sewing center. Cut it the width of the base of the bag or, or tote or handbag, and it's easy to sew through, kind of tricky to pin, so we've used double-sided basting tape. So it's cut the width that you see of the cutout, and then you just put it down. Mm -hmm. And then on the other half of this bag, I've stitched it all the way, half of it. We got a funny little guy here. This is a foot. The foot, you're going to have four of these, and we'll put four feet on them. And they're put on like a magnetic snap. It has prongs and a backing, mm -hmm. and really very simple to do. And we're going to show this to you, how to put these on using a magnetic snap. What a great segue, Eileen. I led into the magnetic <laughs> sure snap. Mm -hmm. And this little black circle that you see here was actually the last color of the strap connector. So it, once that's stitched, you know exactly where to place it on the bag front. And it coincides with the, ta with the tab that you'll later add to the other side of the bag. So just as a review, that's the position when we're embroidering the last color it's going to stitch this round circle. And here you can see that as a close-up of the machine doing that particular stitching. And we like that because you can then place the back of the snap in this area and cut with a... That's a buttonhole yeah. chisel, I guess, yeah, huh, right. Nancy? Exactly. Yeah, nice and sharp. And then you insert those prongs. Sometimes it might take a little doing. You have to kind of yeah. cut it twice. And it's so easy to do on camera. Huh? It is. Think? It's easier to do on a flat surface. And yeah. you bring it through. And oh, one more time, Nancy. Here we go. You got to get the prongs to fit your markings. There we go. And if you have a little scrap of the, if you have a little scrap of the plastic, you can put that in that same backing we used. Put on the backing. One more time, here we go, mm -hmm. and then flatten it out. And that way the snap is in the right spot, is secure, and now we're ready to do the stitching of the tab. For a chic bag closure, consider stitching a designer tab. Created totally in the embroidery hoop, the tab has embroidery accents and functional placement lines as part of the embroidery design. Eileen and I will show you up to the minute tips. This technique, sewn totally in the hoop, gives us a tab. This is kind of a, the tab we're going to work with right now that is decorative as well as functional. The functional, again, having the placement for the snap exactly stitched as a guideline in the embroidery hoop. You'll be having a file for the back of the tab, and Eileen's going to show you how to create the front. I have the detail to show you the back. Nileen, there's just one digitizing file for the back. That's right, and it includes an outline, alignment marks, and the snap placement guide. Now, the, here's the outline and the placement marks, and then the snap guide, you also stitch this on, the, on a stabilizer, the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then you cut out the stabilizer so that you don't have the bulk in the seam allowances, and you can trim the fabric a fourth of an inch or so beyond the trimming and then just fuse the stabilizer in place. You saw that snap placement, that, that zero or that circle, and that's where you're going to put the snap. So you have created the back of it. That's the functional part. Now for the decorative part. I've selected my tab closure design and I'm going to just walk you through the colors so you can see. Color one is a decorative element that's right on, stitched right on the fashion fabric. And then we'll go to color number two, and that's where those hash marks come into play. They're very important. And then color three will be the actual, uh, it's a two-ply run, meaning it's going to start up here, run all the way around the design, and return. And that's going to sew my lining to my front. So let's go ahead and get started with this design. I'll lower my presser foot and sew. Mm -hmm. Gives new meaning to the word sewing when you can just push the button and That's no right. hands. No hands. Now, the, there are several options. Mm -hmm. There's pretty ones that uh, have some polka dots to it, really some sure. you know, accents and then some quilting designs on the other tab. 
So you can see this is, takes a little bit longer to stitch out with gridded mark and polka dots and a marquee shaping. And then the third option that we have is a quilted option. Looks like a double wedding ring, quilted style. Mm -hmm. Again, all the functional part is stitched to the underside of the tab, and this has the quilting design. Tone on tone is nice, or you can use contrasting. It coordinates with some of the strap connector designs. Mm -hmm. This is a, a bean stitch. You know, Nancy, a bean stitch is a triple stitch, so it means that the needle penetrates the fabric at point A, comes back to B, enters again at A, and then moves forward. And so it's a very strong stitch, but it also gives it a great accent to any kind of plain fabric. Mm -hmm. So as this stitches, it's just going to take a couple of minutes to sew the edge, and then Eileen's going to place right sides together. And rather than taking off the embroidery unit, she, it's, she's just going to be able to do that stitching right in the embroidery unit. So we're going to let this stitch, and when we come back, it'll be almost completed. My design is almost complete. I've already stitched color one, the decorative details, and color two, which are the alignment marks. There's four that are stitched in the hoop. They're outside of the pretty design, which is a good thing, because we'll use them to line up the lining of the tab with the design that is stitched in the hoop. Nancy, when you stitched this, you did a great job making sure that you didn't trim away those alignment marks sure. on the lining. Leave a generous fourth of an inch seam allowance. I, I think so. And we're going to go ahead and start this. We'll help it along a little bit, make sure that the foot doesn't catch the top of the tab. But once you start, you're in good shape. And you know, so often we think of embroidery as decorative. Well, this is a functional part because it's doing the sewing, sewing the tabs together, which makes it easy and it has back stitches at the top. It does, and it's actually going to travel around twice. And you know, Nancy, I, I'm sure you are able to do this, but I would not be able to sew a perfect scoop or just sure. curve no, on both no, sides. I so this is a, a way to get a very professional fin finish with an embroidery design. So it's giving it security around the edges because this part of your handbag is going to get a lot of wear. Probably the most wear than any part of the bag, mm -hmm. except the straps. So then after it gets to the top, you can pop it out mm -hmm. and do some trimming. I'll let you do okay. that. And this is when you could get rid of those alignment marks. You don't have to worry about them anymore. No, they're, they're, they've served their purpose. That's right. So I'll pull it out of the hoop and we'll trim it. Just get this out of harm's way. Sure. And it's so easy to turn. You know, it takes a little bit of doing because that craft uh, or that fashion interfacing that we used is rather stiff and you do have a layer of batting in there. But all in all, with a little bit of patience, it turns very easily. And then you press it so it's nice and flat, all those curves. I do like to use a um, a point turner to mm -hmm. smooth those seams, especially along the curve. And then I'll just start by pulling the right side yeah. in and out. And then I think you have a finished yeah, one. Yeah, it does. It takes a little time to turn it right side out. So uh, let me just show you the right side out. And you do some pressing, has a different color thread. Then you measure a fourth of an inch above the final stitching. And then you'll trim off this extra seam allowance at the, at the pink line. We've shown you as I mentioned, the one design, and there are several other designs, and soon we're going to show you how you attach the tab, whether it's the marquee design or the quilting design, whatever you may be having, to your bag, so that your appliques for the tabs, the appliques for the strap accents, and the corners all can coordinate as they have on this bag. So that's why we call these designer bags because they have designs that are exclusive to the fabric and to working with your embroidery machine. To finish your designer handbag, don't forget about the lining details. The inside can be as exciting as the outside. Whimsical lining colors and personalizing labels are just a few ways to add the proverbial icing on the cake. I have a really fun whimsical lining on this bag. And notice it's kind of light colored so that mm -hmm. you can see the gadgets that are inside. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it makes it easy to find your belongings. And we'll show you other ways of working with the lining, but the next step would be 
two, in, so the side seams do the shaping, but there's one more detail, designer detail that we'd like to share with you, and perhaps you remember seeing this bag, and it's shaped on the side. It was a rectangle to begin with, but you can carry it at the normal size or tuck it in. And then snap it really it. becomes a fashion bag, not just a tote bag. So before sewing the side seams, put in an extra two snaps, uh, two pair of snaps. I put the innies on the right side and the outies on the outside, measuring down an inch and a half and over two inches. Now you can do this using the technique we showed you, using the magnetic snap. Mm -hmm. And I just use the disc of the snap to mark the points of which we would do the cutting. And again, down an inch and a half, over two inches. And then you'd use your snap, place it in, the, in there as we have showed you right here and both sides, and you'd have four snaps. And then you're welcome to sew the side seams because when you're done, when you're finished sewing the side seams, it will shape. Speaking of side seams, pretty simple to do. And it's simple because we have had the shaping created by that embroidery. You sew the fourth of an inch side seam, and then there's a hole. Right, and of course, when you sew that side, to, side seam, again, you have to match your appliques. So I always put a binding clip right there at that match point, mm -hmm. and then sew that closed. And then you have this big hole in the bottom of your bag, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> and you fold it until those edges, the center seam and the side seam align. Mm -hmm. And we've stitched in this area. And when we turn this right side out, there's a lot of stabilizers in here, but let me show you how that shapes. And that stabilizer is really very forgiving. You can mm -hmm. kind of manhandle it in this fashion and then steam all the any creases or folds that you don't want. And notice, here's the embroidery. I've only turned half of this inside out. We'll give you another bag, but look at what a nice shape that is. Beautiful. It's very professional looking, Nancy. Sew the other at seam and then cut a lining, fun mm -hmm. lining. I usually cut my lining the same size as my bag, but mm -hmm. I use a half inch seam allowance on the side seams so that it just, just a little tiny bit smaller than the bag and fits in there nicely. You can add an embroidery, a label, mm -hmm. whatever you'd like, and then meet the, the lining inside the bag wrong sides together. Mm -hmm. Here's another progression that we have with the bag where the lining, fun lining, is meeting to the bag. And we've used clips because sometimes those pins, it's, you get hurt. You get hurt. <laughs> mm -hmm. When you're sewing around. Now you know we just finished with that tab, sewing the tab, and here's another tab we have. And I've marked the center of the tab. And place it in the center of the bag. bag. And then you'd stitch across the end. Mm -hmm, to baste it there. The very final step is to finish the top. The binding. And this is a very simple quilting technique that we've used and applied. Now, we have contrasting samples. You would have the same binding strip. And the binding would be cut two and a half inches wide. Let me unfold this for you two and a half inches wide, and then fold it in half, wrong sides together, meeting the long edges. This is a quilting technique, so perhaps some of you have done this. So one end is cut straight, and the other end is cut on an angle, a 45 degree angle, just trim it off with your ruler at 45 degrees, and then place a strip of paper-backed fusible web on the very edge, and press it to the inside. Start sewing at this angled edge, sewing about four inches from the end, and then you'd sew all the way around. Right. This represents the tail end. Mm -hmm. Now, Eileen, you want to take out the fusible web? Sure. I'll, I'll give you, that to you. Okay. And that will allow me to tuck the binding end into the binding beginning, and then do the honors and give it a press. This okay. will be the seam the seam for that short little edge. Now that is a great time-saving technique, Nancy. It is. There's too much tail here. So on this sample, you'll see that we've trimmed the tail, just trimmed off the excess fabric. Now finish sewing your seam. On this sample, we simply would wrap the binding to the wrong side and edge stitch or stitch in the ditch. You mm -hmm. want to show them your bag, Eileen? Sure. So around the edge, the binding was just stitched in the ditch or the edge. And through working with the magic of sewing techniques and embroidery techniques, you have all the basis you need to know to make a designer handbag.
The magic combination of sewing and then filling a need has no borders or boundaries. During the Nancy's Corner segment, I've interviewed many groups and individuals who share their love of sewing to help others. Halfway around the world in South Africa, the skill of sewing shui shui popis, popis is the African term for dolls, benefits both children and the doll makers. Elizabeth Shell with Marula Imports is involved with the project and joins us on Skype. Welcome back to Sewing with Nancy, Elizabeth. Hi, Nancy. Thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited to tell you and your views, viewers about some really fun and delightful imaginative fantasy figures called Shui Shui Poppies. Now, Poppies, they're, they're cute little dolls. They're adorable. But why don't you give the little history behind them? Sure. Um, shui Shui is 100% cotton fabric that I import from South Africa. And as you mentioned, the word poppy is the South African word for doll. Mm -hmm. So the dolls are based on drawings of children who attend a malnutrition and rehabilitation preschool in a town called Zola Soweto. The children put crayon to paper and they produce these enchanting drawings. And then men and women from the community stitch life into the drawings by creating the dolls in the likeness of the drawings using the shui shui fabrics. Now these dolls, the sale of these dolls have a, a benefit to the people of South Africa. Tell, yes. uh, tell our viewers about that. Well, the Shui Shui Poppies initiative was born out of the idea to create income generating opportunities mm -hmm. to lessen the community's dependence on food parcels. There's an organization called the African Children's Feeding Scheme, and they already provide much needed food to 32,000 children around the wow. Johannesburg area. So the sale generated from the Shui Shui Poppies alleviates some of this need, and the income goes directly towards feeding and educating children in the community. Let's uh, let our viewers see some of these great dolls. Here I have Faith. They're all named, real cute little designs. And then we have in my chair where you normally would sit if you were on our set. We have four poopies sitting there just filling, smiling at me, and they all are designed from the uh, from children's drawings and using the shui shui fabric. They're really charming. They're all very unique. They're a little quirky. And <laughs> best of all, they're very much untainted by adult perspective. Right. That they're quirky and, and they, they just you just want to smile when you look at them. And it's amazing to think that the sale of these helps feed lots of people, a little That's children. That's correct. Yes, Nancy. So you, the fabric, Shui Shui fabric, is available in the United States as well as in, of course, South Africa. But the, the creating of them, the creating of the dolls, means a lot to children as well as to the people who sew them. That's correct. Right now, there's a group of 15 women and one man involved with the creation of the dolls. They range in ages from 19 to 69. They're all from the local Soweto community, and they were previously unemployed. So this Shui Shui Poppies initiative is offering them so many benefits. It's most importantly sustainable employment, mm -hmm. um, educational opportunities, and then a real sense of pride and purpose for the people involved in creating the dolls. And you know, no matter where people are sewing, whether it's in South Africa, the United States, uh, Japan, or wherever across the world, I think what you are telling us that that's exactly what it brings encouragement it sustains people and the gift is in the giving and, and that's what you've been doing through your fabric that's are correct there's there some other in, interesting thoughts you'd like to share with us about the dolls the poppies it's such an interesting term Yes, well, you know, the Shui Shui Poppies Initiative, it has done so much for the social upliftment for impoverished communities, mm -hmm. but it's done other things, had other benefits that were really unexpected. It's really helped build the, the self-confidence and self-esteem of the people involved. They're so excited about what they've <laughs> accomplished so far, and they're really excited about the potential for the future for what they could accomplish. All through sewing and some artwork by children and using your specialty fabric. What a, a great combination. Elizabeth, thank you for being with us and for sharing this great project and your wonderful fabric. Thank you, Nancy. I'm very privileged to have joined you today. 
For more information on Shui Shui Popis, please check out our website, nancyzeman.com, where you'll find everything relating to Sewing with Nancy. The current 52 shows are available for you to watch online, and all the Nancy's Corner guests are listed, so, so are their topics. Plus, you'll find more sewing and quilting information posted bi-weekly on my blog. Special thanks to Eileen, Eileen Roche for joining us for Designer Handbags, our two-part series on creating and stitching with embroidery the bags. And thank you for joining us. Bye for now. Nancy and Eileen have prepared a CD entitled Designer Handbags that includes the instructions, designer techniques, and embroideries for the bags featured in this two-part series. For ordering information, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2517. Order item number CD00800, Designer Handbags. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.